Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I'm going to show you how to crochet around, uh, well, we're going to crochet around a rock, but you can use this technique to crochet around any round object that you like. So you could use a glass bead. This here is a walnut that I crocheted around and made it into a pendant. And I do have a tutorial for this ribbon necklace and these wire wrap clasps, so I'll put a link for that below. Or just a nice standard bead you could crochet around. But I think the rocks are really fun to crochet around and we use crochet cotton for that. So let's get started. Now the supplies you will need for this project are pretty simple. So you need some sort of a round object that you want to crochet around and then crochet hooks, some scissors, and a darning needle. Now, depending on the size of the rock or object, you can work with a fine crochet cotton thread. This is a number 10. In that case, you wanna use a small crochet hook, a steel hook, probably about a 1.75 would work for that. And that's good for smaller pieces. And that's what I used for the walnut was the finer thread. So we're going to be working on a slightly bigger project, a bigger rock. And for this one, I'm using a number three crochet cotton with a two millimeter crochet hook. So that's what we're going to be working with. Now I've brought in a different color background so you can see the yarn easier. So I have uh, all the uh, supplies here that I need and the rock here that we're using, this one is two and a half inches wide, which is six and a half centimeters by three inches long or seven and a half centimeters in length. It doesn't have to be perfectly round and it doesn't have to be perfectly this size either. So we're going to start with a slip knot. Now, if you're new to crochet, I do have a beginner crochet series and I'll put a link to that below. So put your slip knot on your, on your hook and you'll start with a chain four. And then you're going to do a slip stitch into the top post of your first chain and just yarn over, bring your yarn through and create a slip knot, a slip stitch. Then you're going to do eight single crochets into the ring. So just put your hook into the ring, grab your yarn, pull that through. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And put your hook back into the ring, bring the yarn through, yarn over and through both loops. And so you're going to do a total of eight single crochets all the way around. So I'll see you on the other side. Now to join this round, you'll do a slip stitch into the first single crochet going under the two posts of the first single crochet with a slip stitch, just like that. Now you will chain three and this will count as a double crochet, your first double crochet, and then you'll chain two more, which counts as a chain two space. Then you're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch. So yarn over and going under the two posts of the next stitch, bring your yarn through, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two loops and then chain two and do another double crochet into the next stitch. Again, going under the two posts of the next stitch, bring the yarn through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops and chain two. And you're going to do that all the way around. All right, so I'm coming around to the end. So you should have a total of seven double crochets and you're beginning chain three, which counts as a double crochet. So you'll have eight double crochets all together. So I'll chain two. And then we'll join this round by doing a slip stitch into the third chain of your beginning chain five. 
I'm picking up two posts there and doing a slip stitch. And there we go. And that completes round two. Now for round three, we'll start with a chain three. And then we're going to do three double crochets into that chain two space. And that's two and then three. And then you'll do a double crochet into the top of the double crochet from the previous row. And then three double crochets into the chain two space. And you'll do this all the way around. And that's three. And then doing a double crochet into the top of the double crochet from the previous row. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you on the other side. So just finishing up here with one more double crochet and then we'll join this round by going into the third chain of the beginning chain three with a slip stitch just like that. For row four, we're going to chain three and that counts as your first double crochet. And then you'll chain two and then skip a stitch and do a double crochet into the second stitch. And then chain two and do skip a stitch and do a double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to do that all the way around. So chain two, skip a stitch and do a double crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you on the other side. Coming to the end of this row and you can see how it's starting to form a bit of an oval shape there. So I'll just chain two and then we'll finish this round by doing a slip stitch into the third chain of that beginning chain five. So join that with a slip stitch. Now at this point, you can try it on your rock, see how it fits. And this is fitting very nicely. And I'll just show you here on the other side. So it's just coming around the edge of the rock. So this type of crochet is, um, you're probably gonna have to modify it a bit. So if your rock is perhaps a little bit bigger, wider or flatter, it wasn't quite this deep, but flatter, then you may want to fan these out a bit and what in that case you would do a chain three in between your double crochets or maybe even a chain four if required and if you wanted to make it smaller you could do a chain one in between so you can play around with it a little bit because all rocks are not created equally but this is a good fit for this size rock now what we're going to do is we're going to start to bring the piece in so it'll wrap around the bottom side of the rock. So to do that, we'll start with a chain three. And then you're going to do a single crochet into the top post of that double crochet from the previous row. And then chain one and then do a single crochet into the top post of the next double crochet and chain one and single crochet into the top of that double crochet post and a chain one. So you're going to do that all the way around. 
welcome back. So here we are at the end of the row and I've done my chain one and you're going to join on with a slip stitch into the second chain of that beginning chain three. Just like that. And then at this point, we're just going to cut a tail about oh, 10 inches long, something like that. And then you pull the yarn through. We're not going to fasten off, just pull the yarn through, just like that. And then what you want to do is darn in this beginning tail. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So there we go, I've darned that in. And before you go ahead, you want to make sure that your piece is going to fit over your rock, which it does. And then you're going to put your darning needle onto the thread. And working from the back, you're going to go in a counterclockwise direction in uh, away from your yarn. And you'll start by putting your needle in through the back post of that first chain and going from the right to the left and then come around. You're going to skip a stitch and go in again to the second stitch coming from the right to the left, just picking up that, that top post. Skip a stitch and go in from that side. And you want to go in this sort of looping direction because essentially you're creating like a gathering stitch here that you're going to use to pull the back tight around the back of the rock. So go ahead and we'll see you on the other side. All right, so I've gone all the way around and I'm just going to catch that last stitch. You can see where I began here. So you want to catch that very last stitch before the beginning stitch, if that makes sense. Now you're going to put your rock in and whichever is your good side, this rock has a round side and a flat side. So I'm going to put the flat side to the back. And so you can just fit it in there. It might be a little bit of a snug fit, but it should be actually snug. So just sort of work it over. There we go. And then you just want to fit it on the rock and shape it and center it and even everything out, even all the little stitches out. And then you're going to pull on that thread and, and pull it kind of gently and kind of help to work it around with your fingers and tighten it up and try to pull it, the tension evenly. Yeah, and just use your fingers to kind of work it around and, and snug it up pretty good. You want it to fit nice and snug around the rock and make sure it's all even and here and even around there. And that's looking pretty good. I lost my needle, so I'll put that back on. And then you're going to want to create a knot. So just bring your needle in like that with a little, little stitch, and then we can create a knot. And so I've got my loop there, feeling rather awkward. So we'll just do a simple knot with two little loops, two little rounds through the loop. 
and pull that nice and tight. And then you're just going to weave your tail in. And just go back that way and then back the other way. And then you can trim your tail off. There we go. See how nice that looks? You can't even tell. And so the back's all done. And I think the back even looks great. So there you go. It's all done. And I think these are just fabulous. They're so much fun. And you could have a whole basket full of crocheted rocks. That would be so much fun. And you can see the backs here depending on the size of your rock and you snug up your back basting yarn, it'll all be a little bit different. So, you know, it's quite forgiving in that way. And with the walnut here, I ended up snugging it up all the way and just stitching it closed. So it just depends on the size of your rock, how much space you'll have left here. And, you know, the back sides are even kind of nice like this and you could even paint like love or something on this side. So yeah, or just have a basket full. And if you're using it as a pendant, what you want to do is choose whatever is the top of your piece and pick up a couple pieces of your double crochet. You'll put a jump ring this way and you'll put another jump ring that way so that it will thread onto the necklace so that the pendant faces forward. So you'll need two, two jump rings for that. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There's so many fun things you can do with this technique. And so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. Thank you for joining me.